Okay, hello everyone. Um, today we will be showing you how to use the beta function. So it's still quite basic stuff, but it's still a very powerful tool. Um, first of all, I'll show you the solution to the um, challenge from the last video. And that is to show that this integral is 2 times the square root of 2 pi. And, well, yeah, the obvious way to do it would be to use the fact that w of u e to the u is equal to uh, u. So let x equal u e to the u. To differentiate both sides, you get dx being uh, u plus 1 e to the u du. Well, since w infinity is infinity, w is 0 is 0, we have 0 to infinity u times dx, which is now u plus 1 e to the u du. Divide that by um, u e to the u to the power of 3 halves. That is equal to u squared, uh, so that's going to be u to the half. Um, e to the minus a half u du plus... Basically the same thing except this power will be different. This power will be uh, 1 minus 3 halves, which is minus a half e to the minus a half u du. So the obvious substitution to use is u equals 2t because then du is equal to 2 dt. So the first integral becomes 2 times root 2, t to the half, e to the minus t dt. Uh, the second integral also is multiplied by 2 because du is 2 dt. Now 1 on root 2, um, t to the power of minus a half, e to the minus t dt. Um, Using the gamma integral, we know that this first term is going to be 2 root 2 times gamma of 3 halves, which is a half gamma half. The gamma half obviously is going to be the square root of pi, and we're left with just root 2 pi. The second bit, um, we can cancel this out and write root 2, um, and this is just gamma half, which is um, root pi as well. And hence, we have the answer, 2 root 2 pi. Great. Now I'm going to um, explain to you what the beta function is. So the beta function is defined as this. It's a two variable thing. Tx minus 1, 1 minus t, to the power of y minus 1 dt. Um, this is symmetric because if I substitute t going to 1 minus t, then I get minus 1 minus 1 is 0, 1 minus 0 is 1, 1 minus t, x minus 1, 1 minus 1 minus t is just t. Now swapping the limits is the same as um, negativing the whole thing, so we're left with uh, t to the power of y minus 1, um, 1 minus t to the x minus 1, dt. And so we've, we've shown that beta of x, y is equal to beta of y, x. Okay, so we're going to show that beta of x and y is actually just gamma x, gamma y, over gamma of x plus y. So the way we're going to prove it is actually to show that gamma x times gamma y is equal to beta x, y times gamma x plus y. So the first thing we're going to do is just write out gamma x, gamma y, as their integral definitions, so 0 to infinity, and I'm going to use p and q for the integration variables, so p to the x minus 1, e to the minus p, dp, 0 to infinity, of q to the y minus 1, e to the minus q, dq, and then we're just going to combine these into a double integral, so we get a double integral, both of these from 0 to infinity, of e to the minus p minus q times p to the x minus 1 q to the y minus 1 dp dq and then we're going to do a substitution so we're going to let p equal z t and q equal z times 1 minus t to figure out what dp dq is we need to find the jacobian of this so j is z t minus z 1 minus t determinant of j is just z and now we need to find the limits p and q both from 0 to infinity so 0 less than zt less than infinity and 0 less than 
z one minus t less than infinity divide by z and then we get that t and one minus t are both positive and that means that t is between zero and one divide this first inequality by t and we get that z is between zero and infinity uh, so now we can rewrite our original integral in terms of the new variables so we get zero to infinity zero to one e to the minus z z t to the x minus one z one minus t to the y minus one z dt dz because we're doing the t integration first so now we can expand these and we get zero to infinity zero to one e to the minus z z to the x plus y minus one t to the x minus one one minus t to the y minus one dt dz and now if we look at this part of the integral and this part of the integral separately this part contains z's and no t's and this part contains t's and no z's so what we can actually do is separate them out uh, so I'm just going to keep it like this so if we look at this part this is just gamma of x plus y this part this is just beta x y so now we can just divide by gamma x plus y and get the original result okay so I'm going to do an example now so we can do 0 to 1 of the square root of x minus x squared dx uh, so pretty simple example of this we can just rewrite this uh, as 0 to 1 x to the half 1 minus x to the half again dx and now this is immediately the definition of the beta function so we get beta of 3 over 2 and 3 over 2 again and now using the result that we just proved we can rewrite this in terms of gamma as gamma 3 over 2 times gamma 3 over 2 over gamma 3 uh, gamma 3 is just 2 factorial, so 2, and then gamma 3 over 2 is a half gamma half, and then we're going to square that, so we'll get 4 times 2 on the bottom, and gamma half squared on top. Gamma half is the square root of pi, as we know, so we get that this is just pi over 8. And something to note is that this uh, function, square root of x minus x squared, does actually have an elementary indefinite integral, so you could just integrate like normal and then substitute in the limits but using the beta function like this it's much shorter it's much easier to do our next example is going to be 0 to infinity of 1 over 1 plus x to the n dx uh, so it's not immediately obvious that you can use the beta function for this one but it turns out you can with some substitutions so a 1 over 1 plus x squared is something that we could use a tan substitution for. So what we're actually going to do is substitute x equals tan u uh, to the power of 2 over n. So that way this x to the n will just turn into tan squared u. dx is a 2 over n tan u to the 2 over n minus 1 sec squared u du. So now we can rewrite this as the integral from 0 to pi over 2 now of 1 over 1 plus tan squared u 2 over n tan u to the 2 over n minus 1 times sec squared u du and this 1 over 1 plus tan squared is 1 over sec squared so this cancels with this and then we can take the 2 over n out as a constant so we get 2 over n integral from 0 to pi over 2 of tan u to the 2 over n minus 1 du and now well, to use the beta function we need two things multiplied so we're going to rewrite this tan as sine u over cos u so we're going to get 2 over n 0 to pi of 2 sine u to the 2 over n minus 1 cos u to the 1 minus 2 over n du so now we're going to substitute u equals arc sine t we get du is then 1 over square root of 1 minus t squared dt 
and the top line is going to change from pi over 2 to 1 so that's starting to look more like the beta function which is good so we're going to get 2 over n 0 to 1 of t to the 2 over n minus 1 and then cos u is obviously just the square root of 1 minus t squared half minus 1 over n and then du is 1 minus t squared to the minus a half dt so we get minus a half here and this half cancels with this minus half dt and now we've almost got the beta function but we have a t squared here so we're going to substitute say z equals t squared dt is 1 over 2 square root z dz we're going to get 2 over n 0 to 1 z to the 1 over n minus a half times 1 minus z to the minus 1 over n and the dt is 1 over 2 square root z so the 2 is going to cancel with this 2 and then this 1 over square root z is z to the minus a half so this power here is going to turn from minus half into minus 1 and then we just get dz and now this is the definition of the beta function so we get 1 over n beta of 1 over n and 1 minus 1 over n we can rewrite this in terms of gamma as 1 over n times gamma of 1 over n times gamma of 1 minus 1 over n over gamma of 1 over n plus 1 minus 1 over n which is just 1 and gamma 1 is 1 and now if we recall the refraction formula which I'll just rewrite gamma z gamma 1 minus z equals pi cosec pi z this is exactly what we have here but with z equals 1 over n so using this reflection formula we can get our final answer which is going to be pi over n cosec pi over n okay now i'm going to uh, calculate the perimeter of an ellipse so we have an ellipse now perimeter of an ellipse is actually quite difficult to calculate so we've got stuff called elliptic integrals to calculate them but we can calculate the perimeter of this specific ellipse using the beta function and I'm going to show that the perimeter is equal to 4 root 2 pi to the power of 3 halves over uh, gamma squared a quarter um, plus gamma of a quarter squared all over the square root of 2 pi. So the first thing to do is obviously to put this on a set of axes. What's the equation of this ellipse? This. So what I'm going to do is calculate the length of this and multiply it by 4. Okay, so we have the arc length formula which is um, ds integrated is equal to the integral 1 plus dx dy all squared dy. So clearly we need to find dx dy. So we're going to rearrange this equation first to find that x equals the square root of 2 and the square root of 1 minus y squared. Now um, I'm going to differentiate both sides of this to get dx dy is equal to square root of 2 times 1 on uh, 2 1 minus y squared minus 2y these two cancel so you're left with um, yeah dx dy is equal to root 2y all over square root of 1 minus y squared so dx dy all squared is going to be 2y squared on 1 minus y squared we're going to add 1 to that so that we get the bit that we want inside here and that will give you 1 plus y squared over 1 minus y squared. Now we're integrating from 0 to 1, um, so we've got to multiply it by 4. So that's the square root of 1 plus dx dy all squared integrated with respect to y. So the substitution to do is actually going to be 2 to the power of a quarter. That will give you um, dy is a quarter t to the power of minus 3 quarters dt y squared is equal to root t, so the quarter cancels with the uh, 4. These obviously don't change the limits. So we're going to have our t to the minus 3 quarters times square root of 1 plus square root of t over 1 minus square root of t dt. Multiply top and bottom by this bit. I can write this as two little square roots. See? Okay, so we're going to multiply top and bottom by the numerator. So the square root obviously disappears. And the bottom is a difference of two squares, which will obviously give you the square root of 1 minus t dt. And now you can split this. Minus 3 quarters plus a half is minus quarter. 
these are integral. So gamma of water is obviously, and that is square root of pi. We have gamma of water plus a half, so a quarter plus a half is five quarters. Oh, so it is. Oops. So I've been informed by Professor Sparkle that, in fact, a quarter plus a half is three quarters. Um, this is gamma three quarters, gamma half over gamma five quarters. Now we can use our gamma functional equation to say that this is equal to a quarter gamma quarter. And so a lot of stuff can be simplified. Now we can use a reflection formula. It's gamma quarter times gamma three quarters to pi cosec pi on four. Cosec pi on four is the square root of two. And so we've shown now that gamma of three quarters is equal to this. Um, and so we can simplify our expression up here to the following. Cancel that, and all of that divides by gamma squared a quarter. Um, now first Sparkle will state our challenge. So our challenge for this video is to show that the integral from minus infinity to infinity of 1 over the square root of 1 plus x to the 4 dx is gamma of 1 over 4 squared over 2 square root pi.